pessoal Isso aqui não dá folga. Né? Me tiraram da cama. Uhum. Né? Me tiraram da cama. Doente, estou doente. Estou na sick. cama, gritando a noite toda. Não, não tem se... que ir, tem que ir. Vocês são... Ah, não. Não, up all night. Não, não, não. they said, I have to go, you have to go. If you don't go, you're fresh. Bom, é claro que a gente está chegando... Of course, we are coming. De uma maratona também, né? O Maurílio teve na África. Maurílio went to Africa. Que eu nunca fui. Né? I never went there. Porque não é para mim, África é para ele. It's not for me, it's for him. Africa Mas... is not for him, Africa is for him. But how many days you, did you stay in Africa? Six days. I stayed more longer. I stayed in Europe. A month. Uh, beginning of this month, I think. The seminar in London was the first one. By the way, it's wonderful. London is wonderful. Five churches, the wonderful church. The seminar there. E tem o mesmo nome uh, de church vocês, has the same é name as you, britânica, não é? But it's a British church. As mesmas iniciais, só que é britânica. Same é initials, but it's British. Um Wonderful church. Um seminar com 300, 340 pessoas. 340, 340 people. Depois viemos a Portugal, tivemos um seminário em Lisboa, com 685 Seminar in Lisbon, with 365 people. Milão. And, uh, on, in Milan, Itália, in Italy. Itália, We have in Italy 13 churches. E, agora, uh, Lisboa, in Lisbon, we um um have a três, very good três group. There are three pastors. pastors. In Italy, we have two pastors. In England, we have two pastors in London. E nós fomos and we were invited um to a seminar. Aqui, The last seminar here, pastores de Denver, no Colorado, uma comunidade Denver. russa. There was a, a Russian, e Russian, Russian community. And they wanted us seminário lá em to give this seminar there in Denver. É uma comunidade russa. There was a, there is a large Americano. Russian community. There are no Os Americans, russos, just Russians. The services are in Russian. Russo. The so, the worship is in Russian. Everything is Russian. We went to the seminar. Era um contato que eles queriam ter conosco. They wanted to uh, have a first contact with us. They had already had contact with the church that we have on East Europe. The Russian, the, uh, the countries from the former Soviet Union have many churches, including in Israel. Today we have five churches in Israel. They are connected to us. Two in Jerusalem, two in Tel Aviv, and one in the uh, port of Haifa. So this is this, this kind of race. So in Denver, the tiredness, uh, because after the service, they keep us talking to them, and we can never leave the church. And, uh, I, there was uh, replies of prayer. People go, receive a prayer, receive a prayer, then they go back to the line and get another prayer. The sheep. Eu não sei, rapaz. Não, mas no mesmo grupo. The same mesmo group, grupo. same group. Então, é, voltou e falei, nós já oramos pela senhora, you, mas agora eu tenho outro motivo. We already prayed for you, but, but now I have another reason. I, I just remember another reason for you to pray. So I said to my, my friend, if we have bees for every prayer, we'll never leave this place. They, they were very nice people, very friendly. Ela in é uma, fact, our doctrine, ela é it causes an impact because nobody has it. É uma coisa it's something that's different. Bem, well, há um assunto, alguns assuntos novos there are some né? new subjects that we have been teaching on the seminars. Para, para Inglaterra e tal. Bom, quem vai dar, então, aí eu cheguei na reunião e disse assim, bom, so I came to the meeting in England and I said I'm going to teach my subject, which are the fifth measure and eternal gospel. And I, spoke, and I said that Anshieta is going to speak about the capital sin. My brother, I was Catholic. And, and when I was Catholic, it was not original sin, it was a capital sin. In Elysia, you were from there, and there are seven capital sin. Did you know that? Did you know that gluttony is one of the seven capital sins? 
Mas quem deu aqui a aula de pecado em capital? Cap Capitão Cine, um dos capitães do pecado original. Em fato, é, alguns assuntos não, novos. Capitão Cine é o original Cine. Primeiro, quinta medida. I, e one moment, subject of the fifth measure, and speaking Vocês of the eternal gospel, you see on the internet, internet people né? love internet. Um, 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 um German said, in an occasion that, an emergent said, it promotes the imbeciles. Somebody says something imbecile, everybody is impressed. In medicine, there's so much, so many crazy things. Raspa a sola do pé, passa no cabelo, na cabeça, passa o cabelo. Você scrape the, the Nossa, soil of the feet and put on the hair. A lot of weird things that you find on the internet. Atacando a gente. So now they are attacking us and saying that Maranatha is now. They put in the Bible fourth and fifth measure. Very well. So the text that I'm going to read as basis is the text of Paul that says the following. Mas como está escrito? As coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu, não viram o coração do homem. São as coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu. As coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu. São as coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu. As coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu. As coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu. As coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu. As coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu. As coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu. As coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu. As coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu. As coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu. As coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu. As coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu. As coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu. As coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu. As coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu. As coisas que o olho não viu e o ouvido não viu. As coisas que o Isn't it laser? No. Melhorar? Oh, uh, turn off the light. Yeah. Dá mais comunhão? To cause uh, people to have é Brasil, better fellowship. Que fazia vigília, que luz apagada, dá mais comunhão. Uh, people uh, uh, used to have mais. a vigil with oh. lights off to Olha bring só. them to have better fellowship. Nós vamos falar aqui. So now we're going to speak here. Inicialmente. Initially. Quarta medida. About the fourth measure. Quinta medida. Depois eu vou explicar o que é isso. And fifth measure, we're going to speak of what it is initially. In 1905, the theory of Einstein revolutionized the world because it was the beginning of this 20th century. The development, and he brought something that was very interesting because, in fact, What did he do? He took the law of Isaac Newton and gave a sequence to it. And what was interesting is that the law of Isaac Newton said that the universe had measures, measurements. Isaac Newton said he spoke of the three measurements of the universe, which are length. Everybody knows from the base, basic school. Length, width, and height. Those are the three measurements of the universe. Length, height, width, and depth. Everybody spoke of this. Nobody argued against it. But in 2019, Einstein said that there was another measure. He introduced then the world found out about this uh, theory, the, the risk, the simplified uh, theory of uh, relativity that says there is a, um, a theory which is called the time. This new measurement, uh, it, what he said about uh, this, uh, the time. Yeah, I'm not going to enter into anything related to physics because uh, I'm not a physicist. I don't know anything about mathematics. I hate it. Whoever invented mathematics was was in a very bad day. So let's just a curiosity. When I was in the second, in high school, you know those equations. My equations never worked out. I think I only passed. I passed this high school. It was wonderful. The people would want it to demonstrate. They would find minus three. I would find find eighteen, twenty one on my formulas. I never liked uh, mathematics, and I never liked uh, Portuguese. Or so Einstein introduced time. Why did Einstein begin to say about time? He said that time is relative. This is all in his own theory. Time is relative. 
So let's understand Você pegar, vamos pegar aqui dois pontos. O primeiro ponto, two points. Miami, the first point is Miami e Boston. And Boston. Tá. Se você viajar If you travel de Miami, for Miami que morou em Boston, Ronil morou em Boston, lived in Boston, Marcos, Ronil Boston, Boston, lived in Boston, Boston Marks lived, lived in Boston. Perfuso, If you Miami do Boston, this uh, tri carro, trip from Miami to Boston by 20? car, how long? 24 horas going to 24 hours driving. 24 horas. 24 hours. E se você for de avião? If you travel by plane. Quanto? How long? 3 horas. 3 hours. Os pontos são os mesmos. The distance is same. Miami Boston. Miami Boston. Um fez 24 horas e o outro One em 3 horas. Did it in 24 hours and the other in 3. Que mudou What is the ingredient that changed the, hum? the speed? O ingrediente que mudou isso. That's the ingredient that changed it. Então, a gente diz o seguinte. So, I just said the following. Isso está na, na, na primeira. It is na, in the first. Isso porque eu li a biografia. Na primeira demonstração. The biography and the first demonstration that he gave. Da lei, da, da teoria the, dele. His own theory. Se pegasse dois gêmeos. If you took two e colocasse, uh, deixasse twins, um aqui, and e you left one here, and one in a da spaceship da luz, at the speed of light, quando aquele que viu, viajou a velocidade da luz voltasse, the one traveled in the speed of light when he came back from his trip, he would be younger certo? than the one that stayed here, right? Então, vamos lá. So, então, Einstein let's go. So Einstein said the following. Em, em 1915, ele aperfeiçoou a teoria dele quando ele introduziu gravidade. Ele colocou a gravidade. Então, ele dizia o seguinte. Quando ele introduziu gravidade. Quando ele introduziu gravidade. Matéria não atrai matéria. Matter does not attract matter. É energia que atrai energia. Então, energy a terra attracts energy. atrai a lua so porque a terra tem mais energia do que a lua. Então, ele começou a dizer isso. Ele introduziu gravidade e mais tarde, foi só histórica. Em 1925, Carl Planck. 1925, Carl Planck uma sequência, uma entered and a, gave a sequence to his work uh, called uh, uh, Quantic Mechanics. So now the students of Planck are now uh, responsible for GPS that you have in your car and satellite that spins around the Earth. No, they're not entering into details about that. So let's go back to the first theory Einstein, of Einstein, which was the first, which was the simpler, was just in introducing time. Simplified theory of relativity. So the first, fourth measure is time. You speak of speed. So time exists in function of what? This songbook. How long does it have? From the day it was printed to the day to today, it has a time. I have a time from the day I was born to today. Thirty. I don't remember. I forget. There's a time that marks from the day I was born. So this room that is here has a time of existence. It was built. Então quando você o tempo está so, intimamente ligado à matéria, certo? Right? O tempo está ligado à matéria. Time is related to matter. Não, o tempo you é uma coisa. Ah, o tempo está passando. Não, não é o tempo está so, passando. So time is passing. No, no, time is not passing. We are passing. Huh? O tempo é uma constante. Time então, is a constant. Então o tempo está ligado à matéria. So, time is related to matter. Vamos agora pegar o seguinte. So now let us Deus. do the following. God. Deus não é matéria. God is not matter. É? Huh? Right? Então, se você pegar so if you essa matéria take this matter, e julgar ela numa velocidade da luz ao quadrado, it, at the speed ela deixa de ser matéria light, e se transforma em energia. Foi isso que ele disse. It transforms Caramba, matter into energy. Matter will disappear. A Bíblia toda diz que Deus é luz. 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 Se a velocidade If the speed das coisas de Deus of the things são of God maiores do que a velocidade da luz, então quando Deus olha, presta so atenção, quando Deus olha da eternidade, eternidade, se é que tem lá na eternidade, não sei se há um existe na eternidade, para feito num palácio, ele olha para a terra, o que, que ele vê? Ele vê uma igreja num tempo de céu. Ele vê uma igreja num tempo de céu. The church, he sees the church in one time. When he sees, what does he see? He sees us, he sees us, no. He sees a church in all its extension. Because his time is not ours. There's no time for him. 
Paulo so, morreu for example, quando? Paulo morreu Paul, hoje. he died when? He died today. Deus? For Paulo God, hoje, Pedro Paul hoje. died today, a Peter died today, hoje. church surfers hoje. persecuted Deus. today, Deus. and God's time Deus is this, é é show, é? time of God Ele is é today, he's not past or future, God is present, então, God's time, so, então, quando Einstein when falou da quarta medida, Einstein spoke of the fourth measure, he plays the fourth measure in what situation, in what characteristic, he plays the fourth measure in the Characters that were very well analyzed, very intelligently placed. As he said it, as he explained it with his reason. So everything that he, he plays, he plays in a, a rational plane. So when we speak of fourth measure, we speak of the rational plan of a creative work, uh, the work, the work that is here. So. So someone comes and says the following. How can you leave the reason into a new plane which is not reason? There's a word in Portuguese that says the following. I'm, I'm not sure if it is in English. There's a word that says transcend. A transcend is to leave from a space, a rational space, into an, an abstract place, which is more or less like this. So, pay attention to this. We are here into a, inside of a measure. We are humans. We are inside of a measurement, which is a plan, which is a fourth measure. We have our own age and all this, but now, if we left this measure that is here, what could happen? Let's take an example of the Bible. Paul. Paul. Nobody remembers Paul. That's what he said here. And he says this, what you hear, didn't hear, that I didn't see, it passed through man's heart, it speaks of him in his own experience. Paul when Paul, he was watching the stoning of Stephen. What was Paul's position? He was in favor of the stoning of Stephen. He motivated those that did it. And after that, he continued persecuting. He would go and persecute and kill. Because he believed that what these people were doing was an aggression to his religion. It was Pharisee. He wanted to kill these people. He wanted to cancel my religion. I'm Pharisee. I'm being prepared to be a rabbi. Now I ask, in his situation there, seeing what was happening to, with Stephen, in what measure he was, was he? In the fourth. The Bible doesn't have fourth measure. I'm going to give you a, a nickname to what is called reason. In his own reason, people is crazy. He speak of uh, Jesus there. He's alive. Where? Well, so he was in the fourth measure, and Stephen, but Stephen says the following. What did he say when the stones were, were hitting him? He says, I see the heavens open and the Lord Jesus standing, waiting for me. In what measure was Stephen? He was in the fifth measure. He transcended. You understand? So what we need to understand and what the Lord wants to show us, I want to come to this point, which is the emphasis of the whole thing. So what the Lord wants to show is that we need to understand the gospel in a different way. Because when you see the spiritual gifts, what is spiritual gift? Is, is it the fourth measure? Paul says the following, what the eye has seen, what the eye has not seen. I'm, I see this, it's, those are plants. I can describe this uh, I can describe the sound that she's playing. 
Eu posso dizer, eu I can say, coração, ideias, eu, I can explain what is falei, going through my heart. Aí, I have ideas, I spoke on my name. Eu tenho Or ideias brilhantes, eu contei para vocês. I have ten, Gente, eu fico, eu fico impressionado. I am é impressed eu when I have wonderful ideas, brilliant ideas. It's amazing. I had one idea, I hadn't patented it yet. Look, uh, one wonderful idea. What a wonderful idea. In 2018, we're going to turn 50 years. The church started in 1968. Now, in 2018, we're going to be 60. I had a wonderful, uh, brilliant idea. I want to start a marathon of which would be a race from where the church started to Manaim, 42 miles, kilometers. We would bring runners from the uh, United States, from Africa. Some may die on the way, but they will put an ambulance and a helicopter. If they die, they will go to heaven. It will be all right. So it will be on the newspapers, television, a great marathon, 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 50 years, 60 years. That was a brilliant idea I had. It passed on my heart. So don't you think that when Paul saw that people, don't you think that it went through his heart when, when uh, the ropes of Stephen were on his feet? Somebody, uh, if somebody came to him and, saw, and told him, you're going to be a Christian, and he would have said, you're crazy, I'm going to ask them to stone you as well. It never went through uh, Paul's heart that one day he could have been like Stephen. And he says afterwards, what did he say afterwards? When he once was on a on the way to Damascus, speaking of threatening and kill, I'm going to go against these people. And then on the way, a light shone upon him, that a light that he had never seen before. And heard a voice that he had never heard before. And it passed by his heart something and he fell to the ground and he says afterwards that when I got up from there I never consulted the flesh and the blood he said I never in other words he never came back to the fourth measure and God, God chose to reveal his son to me so he went to the fifth measure so who does that the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit. So, us, as a church, we need to understand that the, what, the fish, fifth, what the Holy Spirit wants to do with us. Because we can't speak of church in a way that... See one thing. Paul was in the fourth, so when one was taken to the fifth, and he says later about Stephen, it touched him about Stephen, the faithful testimony of, uh, considered everything to him. Stephen had seen what I had not seen. Stephen was seeing what I had not seen yet. Very well. So, from the fourth to the fifth measure, you transcend. And now, let's go. No, there is no, there is no point in the device. So let's go. So leave from the fourth to the fifth measure. Look at, at the top. When the Holy Spirit looks at the church, it sees at the church in one time only. The primitive church, the Pentecostes, the Reformation, and 1517. They put 1530, which is wrong. 1517, and it's time of, of the new. Let's speak of the time of the new. If we had another day to speak here, I would speak of, about uh, the class of Pashamon. So, fourth of Mish measure, fifth measure. So, in December of last year, we had a seminar here. When was it? In Orlando? It was in December, right? But we didn't have this uh, revelation yet. In December, there was a pastor that was walking going up on the, the hill in Manai, and he heard a voice. The voice I heard filled the entire Manai. 
and he was scared when he heard the following eternal gospel. You know, when he went to the meeting, he spoke to the pastor, and the pastor Jesus said, eternal gospel, it's, uh, I think it's revelation. So I went home, Jesus went home, and, oh, what do, do the Lord want with eternal gospel? And the pastor said, the voice that I heard was almost shook the entire man. And the voice that he heard was about eternal gospel. So then I went to the church of Alexander's church, uh, in Brazil because he went to Italy to spend a period there. So I went to a vigil, uh, went to a vigil in this church. So when I took the, the theme of the year, I spoke of, uh, I preached about the eternal gospel. So then I was speaking with Pastor D.T. I said, uh, I had a wonderful experience. What called my attention when the theme of the year uh, was about eternal uh, and eternal gospel. I'm going to give you, uh, tell my experience. And he was telling the following. He heard, and he, he was confused. He was thinking about this eternal gospel. So when he opened the Bible, his wife put the put, uh, lunch there, but he opened up the Bible. Revelation. When he sat down at the table, the Lord spoke with him. And as he put his hand on the table, and the Lord began to speak to him in a normal voice. He left the table, went to his bedroom, and knelt down and began to cry, cry, cry. And she said, what, What's going on with you? And he said, No, no, leave me alone. So then something extraordinary happened. I began hearing about the eternal gospel. And the text of the Bible says the following. When John, he looked in the middle of heaven, there was an angel, huh? right? And the angel, angel had a, uh, in his hand eternal, the eternal yeah, gospel. In the, original, in the, in the original, original, says the following. That text there, it was at point a point in which veria. everyone would see him. And he says, proclaim this gospel to every nation, tribe and kingdom. In the original text, the point in, in the middle of heaven, a point, it, it meant a point that everybody could see. Something a little hard to understand. Eternal gospel. What is the eternal gospel? The word eternal means there is no beginning and there is no end has always existed. Eternal gospel has always existed before the creative work, because Jesus is before the creative work. The gospel is Jesus. Very well. Eternal gospel. So he had a, a major impact. So when God sees his church, he sees the gospel in a single line, in a single time. Hey, there the whole Bible, the Bible itself says that uh, people say heresy and apostasy. Heresy brings people to the sin of apostasy. And uh, the church deviated from the Lord and it became an unfaithful church. What are the characters of the unfaithful church? It's in the Bible. I'm not calling anybody unfaithful. I'm not putting a label to anybody. But the Bible says that there is a people, there is a faithful church, and a people, there is a church, there is unfaithful church. What, is, what consists of the eternal gospel? Jesus said many interesting things. These days, a few days ago, WhatsApp is wonderful because you send good things and some so many stupid things you are forced to see because uh, a brother watched and saw, thought it was so interesting and, but one brother sent something just very waste of time but there was a great preacher in Brazil that was preaching and he said Where has, has anybody seen in the Bible a servant that was poor there is no he preaches about prosperity. A Christian has to be rich. A Christian has to prosper. Because the Bible doesn't say anything about a poor Christian. I think Paul must have built tents and be a big exporter of tents, Paul. The apostles, they were fishermen. They may have exported fish to the whole Asia, great exporters of fish. They were millionaires. But Jesus was a carpenter. No, Jesus is not a carpenter. 
Jesus was just a carpet of kings that were just very beautiful for kings. How crazy is that? You think that Jesus was concerned about this? It's, some, it's crazy. It's a message from a gospel that is not eternal. As you see around you, because the gospel is not eternal, it's inside the fourth measure. What is the fourth measure? In reason. Jesus, it is Jesus for this life. You have a headache, sister, come here, um, clap for Jesus. No, no. You have dandruff. No, no. Yeah, let's pray for her. No, everything is okay. No, no itching head anymore. But the preaching about this is to transform the gospel into something for this life. It's to transform the gospel into something rational. In order for you to accept Jesus, you need to see a sign of cure. Is it like this? No. The Bible says that Jesus reveals himself. So, very well. So, Jesus teaches many things. You want to see one thing? I preached here before. Marks 2. The paralytic, the crippled of Capernaum. Jesus used to, he used to live in, in Capernaum. He went through Galilee and then would always go back to Capernaum. And people found out that Jesus came back to Capernaum and people um, made a big mob around the, the house of Jesus. They were waiting for miracles and four men brought a crippled man. And even think that these four may, may have had, they may have a characteristic of Brazil because you always try to come up with a, a, a solution to a, a problem. Uh, you cannot bring uh, the cripple to, through the mob, then, then you speak, a, a, it's not possible, you cannot go through this. No, 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 it's not possible. So let us just go around it. So when they, there's no way for them to enter into the house. There's no door or window. But then they had a, an idea. How interesting it was that they put the, the cripple on the roof. So I, I ask you, I can't imagine, I wanted to see the scene. If Jesus could have allowed me to go back to that scene, how, how much work they must have had to put this this crippled man on the, the roof. The, let, let's tie him up, let's tie him by the neck, no, no, by the leg, no. The two go up on the roof and we will push, no, he's going to fall, no, grab him by the neck, no, no, he's going to die, he's going to have to raise him for the death, no, 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 let's push, push. So I can't imagine. How, what a struggle. They, they put him on the roof. Oh. And the poor man was there, paralyzed. He could not do anything, not even complain. Down on the roof. And then uh, the roof, um, hey, oh, let, let us make a hole on the, the roof. So they opened up a hole there. So let us bring the crippled man down through the hole. So is it possible that we should bring it down upside down or? or Inside up. So to go down or let's bring him down. I, I don't know how many hours it took for them to do this. It was so much work. It was terrible. And Jesus saw and put the, the crippled man there. And, and Jesus said, yeah, I'm impressed with your faith. How wonderful. And just look at the paralytic. And, and, uh, your sins are forgiven. Hmm? What if I was there? I would not have the same patience. Are you kidding me? <laughs> did you see what we just did? How, how much, how difficult was we had to open up a hole on the roof and bring this guy down? This guy is a good guy. He's a friend of ours from childhood. He has a problem, poor man. And we brought him to here to for you to resolve his problem when we went through all this work and now you look at him and say that his sins are forgiven if i was there oh boy i would have said oh, don't do that with me you don't know how hard it was to bring him here no no uh, sins are forgiven uh, no uh, you could have asked his god uh, uh, have a 
conversation with God, and God would have forgiven his sins. And the Pharisees were there and said, hey, that's what I say. The Pharisees were criticizing Jesus, and Jesus looked to them and said the following. What is easier? I would have answered, oh, what you just did, it's what is easy, you know, what you did, I can do it myself. Your sins are forgiven. But that was not it. When Jesus said, when your sins are forgiven, he placed that man in a new measure. He marks that man, the act of the call, his call for salvation. The only one that could do that was him, because he came for that purpose. His mission was this, to rescue men. So anybody said the following, is it easier for me to say the following? No man could have done Only I can do this. But now, I can say also the following. Get up, take up your bed, and go home. This is the consequence. The eternal gospel, the greatest objective is salvation. The rest is consequence. So there is a people living. There is a gospel. It's living in characters that is not eternal. Uh, this is not an eternal gospel. And it's incredible. When the Pentecost movement stopped having... Um, uh, there was a woman that was a friend of ours. She's a friend of our, my daughter. She's beyond 30. When a woman is beyond 30, she gets a little nervous. There's no need for it. But my mother, she was a great philosopher. She said, it's better alone than... Uh, with bad company. So if you're not married yet, it's better the way you are than with bad company. And it's like every woman, she was poor, poor woman. She wanted to get married. She was from our church, and her mother is from one of those churches. Uh, they have television programs. Yeah. And one day, her mother came home with a, a dish and with five grapes. And she asked him, Mom, what is this? And she answered, Five grapes. You anointed five grapes. The pastor said that you're going to eat one grape per day. On the fifth grape, uh, the man that you were dreaming for is going to show up. He's not going to have grape in the market. If they, if they find out that that works, there will be no grape in the world. How crazy is that? Mysticism. There was a, a doctor, and, and the doctor asked me, how is your church? I'm going to a church like this. I don't know if it's, if it's yours. My friend, I went to a party, and I drank. When I came home, she was sleeping. But it was late, I was just, I had such a, a huge hangover, I was, had so much thirst, I got a big glass of water and drank the whole thing. It was fresh water. In the morning, she, she almost ate me. Who drank the anointed water? He drank the, the glass with anointed water that she had. She was so upset. How interesting is this? So, see one thing. We need to understand. And because the Holy Spirit called us, uh, called us attention to this, we need to understand the eternal gospel at this moment. Why, why uh, do we have to emphasize this? Because of the near. Why near? Why is it? Why are we talking about the near? The near is the moment in which the church leaves just before the rapture. Why are we living the time of the near? Well, of course, why? Is, it, is, is there reason to speak about the, the near to Luther? No, because Luther didn't have the prophecies, he had not prophetic message. He didn't have the trumpets, he didn't have the signs of the books of Revelation. So, see, what is happening to us right now? We are living a moment that is prophetic, that precedes the second coming of the Lord Jesus. So, this moment that precedes the second coming of Jesus, in the Bible, the Bible is called the, the near. And soon, he will come. 
So, whereas here, listen to what the Holy Spirit speaks to the church. We're coming. Uh, Jesus is coming. He can come today, tomorrow. We can study about the time, the near time, the future. But in order for us to be brought to this dimension, which goes by beyond reason, in order for us to understand the gospel, is uh, we need to understand it because we come. We are living in the time of the near. I have an experience that was very interesting. I was at home and received a visit from a, a deacon. And this deacon had left. He left and, and he left. And one day he, he decided to visit me. He had been my deacon. And then he said, I want to tell you one experience. I came back. Hey, how good. You came back to the church, but I came with an experience. So what was your experience? I left, went to a church, a very large church, and uh, a pastor came to speak to the pastors and deacons. This pastor was a man that was a man of God. He looked to everybody and said, and told, told the group of pastors, and he said, what are you preaching? Like Ligeti says, what are you preaching? I, I know you preach prosperity, right? You like prosperity and people making money. And what, how about you? You know, you speak about family, right? Marriage and all those things. Preaching is about marriage and couples, meetings. Now you have uh, uh, work with uh, people with addiction. But I want to ask, what is the pastor that is speaking about salvation? There was a complete silence. And I'm going to ask you a second question, which is even worse. Which one of you is speaking of the second coming of Jesus? Everybody was quiet. That's why Maranatha is going through that struggle. They speak about salvation and the second coming of Jesus. There is a struggle they're going through. You don't have struggle because you're not preaching this. In this moment, the church needs to preach. And he got up and said, I went to another church to hear this. I'm not saying anything bad about anybody, about A and B. I'm, it's not my desire to do this. I want to label anybody. What I want to see is what the Holy Spirit is saying. What is the Holy Spirit saying? People see what the people are there. Everybody has reason. Reason, reason. But what is the Holy Spirit revealing? It's different. We need to understand a thing. Uh, things in a different way. And this is an experience that the Lord wants to give to His church. There is a people that is outside that needs to hear this. And His Holy Spirit is going to do this. I was in Italy and I went to in the class and said the following. Ever thought we are all from the fourth measure. Can you imagine if the Holy Spirit took us to the fifth measure? If he brought us to the fifth, what would you see? There was a woman that was a new Christian. This woman, she was, had a lot of makeup when she put her hand on makeup, make a big mess. And I'm sorry, I forgot. And she, and she cried a lot. And she said, there was something that happened to me. It was when I heard, if you know, please bring us to the next measure, when I heard the next measure, the church, something happened, something left, and it was like a curtain opened up, and I saw a, a, an amazing number of angels, a large number of angels in the middle of the church operating. So she saw, so we are here on the fourth measure, no, right? What are we doing here? You don't have any idea, right? Do you? But something is happening that is beyond what you see. Do you go to the service? No. But there's administration there of the Holy Spirit. If we don't understand the gospel in this way, do you know what we turn into? We, we turn into a bad religion. Maranatha is a religion. As a religion, it's not good. We don't drink. People say that whiskey is good for cholesterol. 
we, we don't do some a few things. We, we are supposed to have only one wife. It's, it's a bad thing. It's a bad religion. Uh, you, you, don't, you cannot bet on the lottery. On 30 million. Oh boy, look at it, boy. <laughs> Oh God, I would have been gi given a tide <laughs> if I won. I want to tell you a story. A pastor in Brazil. He saw the numbers for this, uh, from the lottery, Brazil lottery. The, premium was accumulated. And he told his wife. And she said, yes. He didn't do it, but he he kept the number. And uh, the number, uh, the number that, that it was chosen was his number. And the Lord told him, the enemy prepared that to destroy him. What matter? What is the point of gaining the world and going to hell? If you die in a year from now, because the enemy, he does it. As soon as he gives you, he one, a year later, will uh, have a car crash or fell off a, a building and then you die. It's good uh, to be alive, eating well, uh, healthy, and uh, wait for the right time. The blessing is that in riches. So, uh, now that we're speaking about it, we need to understand the gospel in this moment, which is a moment of the near. We need to understand the gospel in a different way. And this is experience that the Lord wants to give to the Christian, each one of us, in the way you consult the Bible, the way we speak. Amen. What are we going to sing? How is it? In English? Are uh, you speaking Hebrew? El Shaddai?
espero que não repita mais. Glória a Deus. Glória a Deus. Aleluia. Aleluia. servant, my children, all this word, I want to tell you that, that all our needs they are in front of my eyes. I know that your heart has asked me many things about this, uh, things of this life. I know you. I know you from the womb of your mothers. I know your needs. They're legitimate. But in the right time, I'm going to extend my hand to bless you. But I want to tell you that the greatest blessing that I have given you is my salvation. That's what I have placed in your presence as a great treasure. Take possession of it, my servant. Because if you have my salvation, all the other things are, are going to be added onto you. Your fellowship. I want to give you a special blessing of an understand, a new understanding about the doctrines that I have revealed myself. Glorify my name. Because I give you consolation, give you comfort. I've heard you a prayer. And those that are far away have heard you, and I'm answering the plea of your heart. Glorify my name. Because I rejoice in your glorification. We praise your name Lord, for your presence in this place. And now, in your name, we say that the wonderful grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, and the sweet consolation of the Holy Spirit be upon you now and forever. Amen. We have finished the service.